The case for Bitcoin is it's scarce, desirable property. It's not a currency derivative. It's not a security. It's beyond the reach of a company, a nation state, an agency. You can hold it and you can give it to your children or your children's children. You can take custody of it and you don't have to trust a counterparty. Hello and welcome to Wealthy Value. In today's video, Bitcoin evangelist and CEO of MicroStrategy Michael Saylor updates about the current economic conditions, struggling markets and collapsing currencies. Michael Saylor also presents his ultimate case for Bitcoin and why someone with no Bitcoin buy should Bitcoin today. He also reinstates the most obvious risk with fiat currencies, bonds and stocks, and why everything except for Bitcoin is headed towards a collapse. Make sure to stick around till the end of this video, where Michael Saylor explains why Bitcoin is the best investment of all time. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the post notifications. Let's dive right into the video. And I think we can see, especially this month, uh, the risk of counterparties is great. If you hold gold in a vault and you're Russia, your gold can be seized. If you have cash in a bank account in Argentina this week, your cash is locked up. If you had Bitcoin with a counterparty like Voyager or Celsius, they, they might very well block you from withdrawing it. So uh, Bitcoin is desirable because it's portable, it's global, it's scarce. Uh, you can duck a counterparty you don't trust, you can transfer it to a different counterparty, or you can take personal custody. And that's why it's a, it's a useful asset right now. And it ought to be part of people's portfolios. And I can't think of anything better. I think we're living in a very uncertain world right now. And there's a lot of political uncertainty with regard to politics, trade policy, labor policy, manufacturing policy. So if you're, if you're considering uh, investing in a company the question you have to struggle with is, will the company be impacted by tariffs or trade policy or tax policy or labor policy or manufacturing policy or a war? And so that's that's the first uncertainty. The second uncertainty we're, we have today is monetary uncertainty. We see a lot of uh, a lot of countries with their currencies collapsing. Um, in Argentina, they just implemented some capital controls limiting uh, the amount of U.S. dollars that companies are allowed to hold. In Zimbabwe, they're dollarizing. Their currency has literally collapsed to nothing. And so if you're, if you're holding a currency or you're holding a company or a bond that generates cash flows in anything other than the dollar, you have um, a massive amount of uncertainty and risk. If we look at the last uh, 12 months, the euro has weakened against the dollar, the pound has weakened against the dollar, the yen has weakened against the dollar, the Turkish lira has weakened against the dollar. In fact, just about every currency in the world is collapsing against the dollar, anywhere from 10 to 20 to 30 percent. And in Turkey, it's about 90 percent in 12 months. So there's a lot of monetary uncertainty to go along with that political and that commercial uncertainty. We call the two things together stagflation. <laughs> you've got a stagnating economy, you've got an inflating money supply, which means that your currencies are buying less. So if you're any individual and you're looking out over the course of a decade and you have any capital that you wish to preserve or you're generating cash flow from your job, the question is, uh, what do you do to insulate yourself from stagflation? 98% of the companies are actually not monopolies, which means that they're getting eaten by Google, Apple, Amazon, Facebook. So if you're buying a non-monopoly company, it's risky for all sorts of reasons. If the company has employees, it's risky because of employment taxes and labor policy and unionization. If the company manufactures things and moves them across borders, it's risky because you end up with tariff barriers. It, it may be, if you manufactured great stuff in China, you can't bring it to the US. Maybe it gets, it gets banned. So, so if you're trying to save your capital by investing in companies, you take on all sorts of uh, corporate risk. If you're trying to preserve your capital by buying bonds, bonds are currency derivatives. 
they're valued based on cash flows. So if the dollar supply increases by 15% a year, you have to discount the bond cash flows by 15% a year. That means that every five years or so, they're worth half as much. If you're holding the cash itself, that's obviously a currency derivative. It's collapsing in value. A person's got to figure out how they're going to store their life savings. And if I'm not going to hold it in a, in a currency, and I, even if I hold it in a currency, not only do I have the inflation risk, I have the counterparty risk. The banks will actually freeze your funds if you live outside the U.S. The banks are freezing people's funds everywhere in the world right now. In the U.S., perhaps your funds won't be frozen. You'll just have uh, the currency collapse. So there's a risk with currencies. There's the obvious risk with bonds. There's a risk with stocks. And uh, that takes you to property and collectible. So maybe you collect Rolexes. A lot of people are doing that. A lot of people, you can see what people are doing in the, this macroeconomic environment. They're buying watches. They're buying uh, luxury cars. They're buying real estate. If you look over the past two years, the money supply expanded by 40%. Uh, single family homes in the US increased in price by 40%. So it looks in the near term over two years, like single family homes uh, are a pretty good inflation hedge. Uh, Bitcoin's performed better than single family homes in that time frame. But now we're, we're stuck with this issue of, well, are single family homes an inflation hedge over a decade? And the challenge there is that as the price of, of homes go up, then there's an incentive for home builders to build more homes. So commodities, um, they, have a, they have an appeal, but if you can produce more of a commodity, then if I increase the price by a factor of 10, I increase the incentive to build that thing by a factor of 10. So silver, gold, lumber, oil, homes, real estate in general, they're all um, they're all subject to um, uh, supply demand elasticity, and when the demand increases, the supply is going to increase. That's why a lot of people probably they actually prefer branded items uh, controlled by monopolies. I, I think they probably almost believe that Ferrari and Rolex are more reliable. They'll keep the supply capped. Like it's not likely that a random uh, suburban ranch house in, sub, you know, in middle America will have a cap supply because there's no, there's no single monopoly or brand organized or brand controller to keep that supply from getting out of control. The, the general strategy when you're staring at inflation is I want to acquire scarce desirable property that I can hold for a long period of time. All currencies are collapsing international currencies much faster than the United States dollar, but the United States dollar is also collapsing. So I have to find property, which is not correlated to currency. I need it to be scarce. I need it to be desirable. I need to be able to afford to hold it for a decade, maybe hold it for 20, 30, 40 years. And I want something that's globally desirable. Ideal, And the ideal property is something that a person more affluent than me more more intelligent than me will want from me in a decade so the case for bitcoin is it's scarce desirable property it's not a currency derivative it's not a security it's beyond the reach of a company a nation state an agency you can hold it and you can give it to your children or your children's children you can take custody of it and you don't have to trust a counterparty. And I think we can see, especially this month, uh, the risk of counterparties is great. If you hold gold in a vault and you're Russia, your gold can be seized. If you have cash in a bank account in Argentina this week, your cash is locked up. If you had Bitcoin with a counterparty like Voyager or Celsius, they, they might very well block you from withdrawing it. So uh, Bitcoin is desirable because it's portable, it's global, it's scarce. So what are your thoughts Bitcoin being the best investment option for everyone? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.